I'm wondering, right? I am really am wondering, how do dickheads, how do cunts, how do pricks, how do absolute knobheads become so successful despite being all those things and above? Like, what's the deal? Why don't us as human beings, why aren't we able to discern these dickheads and basically do everything in our power to make sure they're not successful? Why is it a common trait around successful people is that they're dickheads at their core? What is it about that? I want you to keep that in mind. Why? Because of this story that I'm going to be talking to you now about the trademark bully, Momofuku's David Chang. You know David Chang, the big square-headed Asian dude that cooks all the Asian food online and kind of acts like, you know, he fucking invented fucking noodles. That dude, right? So he's allegedly suing other Asian food makers, sometimes small business owners who are using the word, I think, chili crunch to describe their chili flake concoction thing they put on their food. Imagine. Imagine sending them cease and desist and shit because he's trademarked the term chili crunch, which is absolutely hilarious. But honestly, this goes to show that for some reason, dickheads like Chave David Chang, dickheads like the fucking, what's his name? The guy that does um, the carpool karaoke, all these type of dudes are able to traverse and get so far up, become incredibly famous, become incredibly rich and successful, despite being quite unlikable people in real life. And I'm also, I'm just really curious to find out why that's the case, why that happens. Like, why do they seem to like, you know, get, uh, get to that kind of level? They have to pass loads of people, train a lot of people, piss off a lot of people, but they seem to keep on going. Why is that? Because usually people tell you the common adage is that, oh, um, don't be a dickhead, right? You hear that term heard a lot, especially now in the nightlife scene that I'm in. People use that phrase, don't be a dickhead, don't be a dickhead, don't be a dickhead, be a nice guy, treat people nice on your way up because you might see them on your way down, blah, blah, blah. But in actuality, do you actually have to be nice to make it? Do you actually have to be a nice person? Do you actually? Or can you just be a cunt, be really good at what you do, and people have to just put up with you? I wonder. Let's read the article. Across the US, a crunchy, crispy-like chili oil is being drizzled over dumplings, noodles, eggs, pizza, and even ice cream. <clears throat> Once an almost secret sauce, this deep red condiment uh, made this bale of bits of dried chili, crispy fried garlic, and often with sesame seeds and Sichuan pepper has its roots in China. Now dozens of brands produce versions of it, um, produce versions as this umami bongo's mainstream. But it's not all well. But it's not all going well in the common aisle. Momofuku, the food empire founded by celebrity chef David Chang, is attempting to seize control of the market, or at least the name. The company has sent a cease and desist letters to companies using the term Chili Crunch and Chil and Chile, as in the country crunch. Look at this guy, man. David Chang is a fucking cunt, isn't it? Not only is he fucking trying to trademark the term Chili Crunch, he's also trademarking Chile, as in the country in South America, crunch. Can you believe it? on their condiment labels, and is trying to trademark Chili Crunch with the US Patent Trademarking Office, the USPTO. It continues, Michelle Chu, founder of Malaysian food brand Homaya, based in New York City, is one of those letters recipients. It states that Momofuku is the owner of all trademark rights for Chile Crunch and Chili Crunch, two different spellings, and that her product, Homai Sambal Chili Crunch, is a trademark infringement. Chu said that her chili crunch is based on her Malaysian family's recipe where she grew up. Mofuku is concerned that consumers might confuse a jar of Homaya Sambal chili crunch, which has colourful floral motif paper label, with a jar of Momofuku's chili crunch with a minimalist um, hand-drawn font and no paper label. Homaya has 90 days to respond. Let's actually check it. I want to see what this label looks like. So this is the one. It's called Homai. Let's see what the Homai one looks like. Because I'm actually curious to see. Where we, maybe David Chang has a point. Maybe their labels are so similar that it's going to be hard to check. Let's see. Let's check the Momofuku one. Let's see what they look like. That label-wise. Let's see what they look like. Let's go to images and let's see the label. So this is what the Momofuku bottle looks like, right? It's that on Amazon. It's a clear, clear jar with a white top, very minimal, you know, some nice fucking, you know, Comic Sans um, illustrating fucking text on the outside. Here's David Chang's big square fat head. And then, of course, here's a Hambao, the, what's it, Homai Sambal Chili brand. And it's completely different. It's completely different. But to be honest anyway, I'm, I'm assuming all chili brands are going to have a similar aesthetic when it comes to their jars of design. It's like honey. Most honey brands have a similar type of design, right? They're going to have, like, you know, some sort of honeycomb style illustration. They're going to have some iteration or variation of yellow 
or of like a burnt orange or a sun or yellow. You know what I mean? That's that's what it's going to be. So what can you actually trademark here? It's all going to be the same, but they look very different. If you're used to buying a Momofuku jar, the first thing you're going to keep an eye on is a white lid. The white lid is a good little branding decision, I'm assuming, right? So they branded the, the jar really well. It's clear as well. So you can see all the different layers. That's really cool. And then you're obviously going to mix it all in. That's quite nice how they've done it. And I like the little lemon on the outside. Maybe it's a bit of zesting. I'm not really sure. But I like the bottle design. I actually prefer the jar design of Momofuku over the this lady. The Homai Sambal Chili Crunch. I actually prefer their bottle design a lot more. Their jar. But still, you're not going to confuse them. So the fact that David Chang is suing these people and telling them to like change the name of their fucking chili crunch because it's too similar to his chili crunch is fucking crazy. And just the term as well, chili crunch. It's so generic and nondescript. It doesn't relate anything. It's, it'll be different if it was like Mo, if it was like Momo chili crunch or something and they named it how Han Bao chili. You know I mean, that would be something similar, but there's no, there's nothing to discern chili crunch from any other. You know, it's just a couple of words. It's like trying to fucking trademark, I don't know, avocado and toast or something. Or, you know, what's that thing called? Um, a BLT. Can you really fucking trademark BLT when that's the term to describe the ingredients inside of a fucking sandwich? It doesn't make any sense. Continues. Each brand has its own recipe of the chili condiment, often calling it chili oil, chili crisp, chili crunch, chili sauce, or a combination thereof. Product labels reflect the shared um, vernacular. But Momofuku is specifically targeting those using the terms chile crunch or chili crunch. Two of the biggest brands, Fly by Jing Sichuan Chili Crisp, launched by entrepreneur and chef Jing Zhao in 2018, and China's condiment queen Lao Gan Ma, look, was it Lao Gan Ma Spicy Chili Crisp? I'm not Momofuku's crosshairs because they use the term chili crisp, not chili crunch. But those who have crunch over crisp or oil for their product are incensed. Come on, bro. So it's okay to call your thing chili crisp, but not chili crunch. Come on. If anything, I will be more confused by chili crisp and chili crunch than I'll be confused by these jar designs. So again, I ask you specifically, what is it about people who are absolute cunts, one of them being David Chang, who are absolute pieces of shit to their own community, right? He's an Asian man himself. He's trying to put down small Asian businesses. He's kicking their back in. He's got a big brand, Momofuku. He's backed by all these big, you know, investment banker guy. He sees himself as a famous person. He loves the fucking limelight. He wants to be big and famous and well-known, all this sort of malarkey. He's got all the resources. So he's squashing, he's squashing all of these fucking small Asian retailers and entrepreneurs who are trying to make a name for themselves, who are trying to spread the beauty of fucking chili crunch and chili oil, wherever they're fucking from, right? They're trying to maybe tell a story about their family, they may be trying to leave something for their generations to come. They're trying to rewrite the history of their family. Whatever they're trying to do, he's stomping over it. But he's incredibly popular. Netflix shows, meeting the president, fucking rich and famous friends. Why is it when at the core, he seems like a cunt? How is he able to do that? Is it that, that common adage that we get told, oh, be nice to people that you meet on your way up? Is that all a lie? Or is, he, or is this guy actually not a cunt? Because this seems like really cunty behaviour. I'm not going to lie. We continue. As the word spread of mother Fuku's um, cease and desist letters among entrepreneurs making the chili condiment, reactions range from fear, annoyance, to disappointment and astonishment at their goal. The company did not return requests for comment. Two described receiving letters as a punch in the gut. Momofuku's Chang, who is of Korean descent, <clears throat> has helped to push Asian food forward in the mainstream. She said, honestly, and also this term, Korean, this, this word descent is an odd word, isn't it? Because where else is he meant to be from, though? It's, it's, it's almost when they say descent as if, like, you were confused. Hey, by the way, guess what? David Chang is Korean. Really? <gasps> no way. Guess what? You know what I heard? What? Agassino is actually, actually of African descent? <gasps> He's of African descent? I thought he was, like, Irish. Like, what is that word? Like, why do people say that? Of, of, of like, Kore of course he's fucking Korean. Like, <laughs> what? Anyway, continue. Um, I said to push Asian food forward into the mainstream. She said, if Kraft Heinz hit me up with a cease and desist, it would have been so distressing. But the fact that it was Mama Fuku makes me really sad. Exactly. If, Kri if Heinz, the, the Heinz company did it, fair enough, right? They're a big multi-conglomerate corporation. They've probably funded loads of civil wars. They probably have their fingers in loads of fucking really horrible things going around the world. They're probably at the seat of power in some of the most, you know, war-torn countries around the world and shit. Fair enough. 
But Momofuku is almost like a, you know, it's part of the community, right? Started off as a small thing, restaurant, blah, 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 food trucks, little stores, YouTube, blah, blah magazine, you know what I mean? It's all the same journey. Basically, they all basically look up to David Chang, I'd imagine. A lot of those people probably look up to JB Chang, especially if they're from Asian descent, right? They see him as, oh, well, God, if that big, square-headed, ugly motherfucker can make it, so can I. Do you know what I mean? They probably look at that at him. And now look at he's, he's fucking smiling, looking like a happy Buddha, but deep down, he's a fucking greedy, greedy Scrooge McDuck. Absolutely crazy. Seattle-based Miller specializes in soup dumplings and also received a Momofuka season this this letter. Caleb Wang, who grew up between Chicago and Shanghai, recently revamped Mila line of source with his co-owner and wife, Jen Liao, since they added a larger portion of crispy, crunchy fried garlic. Honestly, it, when David Chang finds out somebody's adding garlic or fucking crispy sun things or, you know, crispy fucking onions or whatever, or sesame seeds in their fucking chili, he is there. He's there knocking on the door. Hello? Hello? Is that chili? Is that some crunch in your fucking chili? Do you know what I mean? He's there, bro. He's sniffing it out. If you add anything in there that's, in with, that's inkling like what he does, he's fucking on your fucking back. What a piece of shit. Since they added a larger portion of crispy, crunchy fried garlic to their previous recipe, giving it an extra crunch, they named it the Milai, Mila Chili Crunch. It's packaged in a futuristic bottle styled on the curvy calabasas gourd, sometimes called hulu. Our intent was to describe the product. No, nothing that, nothing, noting that chili crunch gives a customer a better understanding of the new condiment than chili crisp. Exactly. Let's see that bottle now. Let's see Milai chili crunch and let's see how different how similar that is to the momofuka chili crunch because this motherfucker david chang is being a piece of shit bro he's really a scrooge mcduck he wants all the monies look at that bottle does that look anything similar to this it doesn't even look anything similar come on david chang give your head a wobble give your head a wobble you square-headed oblong fucking ugly piece of shit look at look at that bottle it's nothing similar to yours Mama Fuku's extra spicy chili crunch is nothing similar to fucking Mila chili crunch. It looks doesn't look similar at all. God damn it, this guy's a cunt. It's packaged in futuristic blah, 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 blah. Mama Fuku currently does not have the registered trademark for chili crunch, but began filing protections, no, the process on 29th of March, um, which can take often a year. To receive approval, it will have to prove that chili crunch is not merely a description of the product inside the jar, but rather that chili crunch has a distinctive, extensive um, use in commerce over many years. How can you prove that? I wonder how they will be able to prove that. How can you prove that chili crunch isn't a descriptive word and is more so something that is related to your brand only? When people think of chili crunch, they think of Momofuku, which is fucking wild because you have to be really in the weeds to think of that. Yes, there are a lot of foodies out there, a lot of restaurant heads, you know, which is bizarre to be a grown person and be fucking creaming over going to a restaurant. But hey, it is what it is. But like, come on, most people just, you know, they eat what they eat. When they go to a restaurant, they like, some, they like something, they'll see it, take a picture of it, and go buy it somewhere else. They don't really think of, oh, this restaurant introduced it, this guy did it, this, they don't give a fuck. Anyway, Momofuku does own the trademark rights of Chili Crunch um, registered, no, Chile Crunch registered in USBT. Of course, because that's stupid. Who's going to who's gonna name their bottle Chile Crunch after the fucking country? It doesn't make any sense. You're going to want to call it Chile Crunch. Um, Chile Colonial had taken action against Momofuku for trademark infringement, unfair competition, according to the documents. Um, typically called the salsa marche, Chile is Spanish. Oh, so Chile is 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 um is Chile in Spanish? Okay, I didn't know that. So okay, so the country Chile is is spicy, like the literal English translation for Chile, the country in South America is spicy. That's fucking hilarious. Momofuku licenses the trademark to a third party according to a cease and desist letter. Momofuku's cease and desist letter says that Momofuku's been offering its Chile crunch product since 2018. So what, bro? You added you're acting as if this condiment of fucking Chili flakes and crispy shits has only been around since 2018. They didn't invent that, I'm sorry. It's like saying you invented sriracha mayo. I wonder who did invent that anyway. Who, who invented sriracha mayo? Who one day, what fat fuck, what big back fat fuck was sitting there one day thinking to themselves, I got it, I got it, I got it. And they fucking squeeze a bit of sriracha and a little bit of fucking mayo in a bowl and then fucking whisk it together and make sriracha mayo. I wonder who did it first, man. I wonder who did it first. It continues. The phrase I would like to refer to in Momofuku case in this is trademark bully, says Stephen Coates. Exactly. Representing Homai. They are a trademark bully. 
This is a clear case of them picking on small businesses with a letter campaign hoping they'll cave because of the financial pressure. If small businesses capitulate and omit chili crunch from their labels, Momofuku's product will appear more distinct as it appeals to the registered chili crunch trademark. Exactly. Now, David Chang's a piece of shit. Again, I don't know why pieces of shit always seem to make it in life. It seems we seem to live in a world that rewards pieces of shit with riches and glory. I don't know why that's the case, but it seems to be the case. Anyway, there is a small update. Momofuku have responded. Momofuku responds to Chili Crunch Backlash. We wanted a name we could own. Meh. I'm, I'm of Korean descent. I don't have anything. I'm wiping my eyes with all these hundred dollar bills from my Momofuku empire and my various other ventures and my new startup I just launched. Uh, fuck off. Let's read the article. It says here, imagine walking into a grocery store and seeing a single brand of each item. Identical squeeze bottles of ketchup, one company's mustard, one brand salsa, just one maker's hot sauce. What a bland world it would be. If Momofuku has its way, the only chili crunch on store shelves will bear the name Momofuku. Momofuku, founded by David, um, David Chang, acquired the rights of Chile Crunch, spelled with an E, last year from Chile Colonial LLC. It's funny that David Chang got the rights of the name Chile Crunch from a company that's got Colonial in its name. And he's now doing the same thing to other companies that have the, the term Chile Crunch in their name. <laughs> Who would have funked it? It continues. Then on March 29th, Momofuku filed a trademark application for the term Chili Crunch, spelled with an I. The stated sending cease and desist orders to multiple businesses um, selling the Chili Crunch products. Social media backlash immediately followed. Actor Simu Liu, who serves as the chief contact officer at Milai, a food beverage company that does dozens of dumplings and Chili Crunch, challenged Momofuku to a blind test taste on Twitter last week. He says the winner keeps it the name. The loser backs off. Bloody hell, the, the food industry is fucking lame, isn't it? Somebody that works at that company said, hey, I challenge you to a blind taste test for the rights of the name. How dorky and lame can you get? The food industry, the food industry is full of some fucking d -d 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 weebs. In a statement to the Times, a spokesperson for Momofuku said that the company has seen multiple... Chili Crunch products rebranded as Chili Crunch over the last year, and the trademark was never intended to stifle innovation on the category that we care deeply about. You're stifling innovation because you're telling other people they can't name their products that have Chili Crunch in it. Chili Crunch. That's stifling fucking innovation, motherfucker. And, and honestly, please, let's not describe putting fucking random, con random condiments in a jar as innovation. Please. Please not do that. Because what? Are we saying the fucking Apple Vision Pro and Chili Crunch on the same fucking spectrum of innovation? Are we being for real? Innovation. Putting some flakes in the jar. Fuck off. Do yourself a favor. Give your head a fucking wobble. Let's continue. When we, st when we created our products, we wanted a name that we could own. Intentionally pick Chili Crunch to further differentiate from the broader Chili Crunch category. A spokesperson said on email, not even David Chang. You see, David Chang's a fucking trademark bully. That's why you can never trust a man whose head is shaped like that. Never trust a man who has a head like this. Never trust a man who looks like, you know, he had one of those. He, he look, he's, got, he's got the type of head of a person who maybe was involved in some sort of high-speed crash, but now they've recovered. You know, it was like all kind of discombobulated, and now they've kind of got better. That's kind of how it looks. Like one eye is droopy. He's got lumps and bumps everywhere. Like there's no discerning place where you can see his neck and difference of his chin. It's all kind of just all over the place. Never trust a guy like that because look at that. He's hiding behind his spokesperson in an email. We worked with a family-owned company called Chile Colonial. Chile Colonial is a family-owned company. Family-owned slave fucking slave fields, right? Family-owned slaves. I love that. I love that term. We're a small brick-and-mortar family-owned slave company. <laughs> All of our slaves are fucking homebred. <laughs> Homegrown slaves. No artificial <laughs> products, no processed food. They're only on keto. They do intermittent fasting. They don't drink soft drinks. They don't smoke. <laughs> Prime quality. I mean, you do a little check on the teeth. Make sure they're all good. Fucking hell. Um, bah, 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 bah. One voice is critical of Momofuku. Threatening legal action um, was Fly by Jing, um, um, entrepreneur called Jing Zhao. She started bottling Szechuan chili crisp in 2018 and is often credited as a catalyst for the mainstream of chili crisp. So it's not even him. Momofuku didn't even popularize chili crisp. It's this lady, right? This woman or right called Jing Zhao. She's the person who 
introduce Chili Chris to the fucking zeitgeist. All right, cool. Let's continue. She's also the investor and advisor in Homai, one of the brands that received season assist letter. Gao's own company and multiple outlets reported filed a trademark for Sichuan Chili Chris 2019, only to the application is dismissed in 2020. Oh, maybe David Chang is getting some of his political fucking, you know, um, friends to do their bidding and pull some strings and get those fucking trademarks cancelled. That's probably the benefit of having fa famous friends, isn't it? And friends of connections. You might be able to reach out to somebody in the trademark office and say, hey, anything that comes through your desk that says Chili Crisp, deal with it. Allegedly give them a little envelope, a pat on the back, and keep it moving. The Chile Crunch trademark should also not be granted, wrote Gal, um, on a sub -sack, on a sub -sack newsletter titled On Trademark Bullies. It is a descriptive term for the cultural product, one that can exist in Chinese cuisines for hundreds of years. And obviously, here's that jar from them. Um, what the newsletter and other stories did not mention, however, is that last week on April 3rd, Fly by Jing filed again for trademark of Sichuan Chili Crisp, according to the U.S. Patent Office. Then on Monday, Gao said in a statement at the Times that she requested to withdraw the application. So everybody's doing the same thing. So she's he's trying to trademark fucking Chili Crisp, and she's now trying to trademark Sichuan Chili Crisp. Everyone's a fucking piece of shit in this food industry, all right? Like, everybody's crabs in the barrel fucking, I guess because they see some money in it. Because once they trademark it, I guess you can then license the use of the name or something. I don't know. Either way, this is fucking lame and G-A-Y. Let's continue. Gao said, um, fly by Jing, uh, reapply for Sichuan Chili Crisp, as well as a Cheng, what's that? Chengdu, Chengdu Crunch. To safeguard against the potential that we need to defend ourselves against a larger power that may be threatened by our existence. In light of the events of the last two days, however, we now believe that there may be enough awareness raised by the scripture of the term that the USPTO will reconsider the Chile Crunch trademarks and we felt comfortable to refile in the request. Even if we are granted the trademark of Sichuan Chile Chris, we have now abandoned Fly by Jing and would not want to use it to immediate to intimidate small businesses. Yeah, if Jabla da -da -da, da -da -da, David Tran, founder of ha Hoi. Was that Hui Fong Foods? Sriracha sauce um, never sought to exclusively own the term um, Sriracha. Instead, he trademarked his signature rooster logo and bottle. Wow, look at that guy. So the founder of fucking Sriracha didn't even trademark Sriracha. He just, he just trademarked the fucking bird. And oh, that's fucking amazing. What a great guy. I rejected the notion that someone would exclusively own something so ingrained in my culture, a food I consider to be intrinsic part of my identity. These trademarks will limit who can profit off the food exactly. You're actually, by doing this, you are actively hurting people from your own community. People are trying to uplift themselves. They're trying to, you know, it's probably entrepreneur, entrepreneurial, well, being an entrepreneur and um, creating a small business is probably one of the only ways outside of probably getting on a property ladder where minorities can go from like working class to middle class, up middle class. Remember, you can actually traverse the class ladder only by having your own business or by, you know, being able to get on a property ladder. And two of those things are not easy. So if you do do it, it's horrible then to get into it, have a small business, traverse up the fucking socioeconomic ladder, and then have somebody that looks like you, who's from the same place you're from, put you fucking down because they trademark fucking chili crisp. Motherfuckers. It continues. I like many Chinese, or I'm sorry, blah, blah, blah. it would be like someone trying to trademark salsa matcha or salsa verde. Wait, inexplicably, somebody did trademark Salsa Verde, signaling a serious problem with the USPTO, lacking knowledge to accurately, fairly determine what's descriptive. Yeah, it's like that person, who's that guy? I think it was a rapper who tr tried to trademark No Diddy. Absolutely cringe. I, I like many Chinese Americans, um, feel a sense of pride and ownership of the condiment typically made of garlic, other aluminiums, other alliums, okay, I've always aluminiums, other alliums, chilies, and oils. Whether you call it crisp, oil, crunch, or sauce, it's a condiment that's integral to cuisine, culture, and experiences of Asian Americans. Michelle Chu, founder and CEO of Homai Foods, called receiving her season assist letter a punch in the gut. Um, and then we end it. Where's the end? Because I'm, I'm bored of this already. Uh, okay, pizza company. Where's the end now? Nearly a decade ago, I bought a, 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 a chili crunch. Belongs to everybody. Cool. So, David Chung's piece of shit. Big up, everybody. Oh, really? 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 I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I had, I had no idea. That's fucking incredible. That's so dumb. Recovery club and earn your Mondays. Go fuck yourself, man. Most people are fucking trying to earn their right to just stay alive. Earn your Mondays, you know? Absolutely. In, in, like, just, yeah, whatever. 
Um, big up, Theodore. Appreciate you, Theodore. Big up, fucking Theodore. Anyways, that's enough of it. We move on. Enough about Mombofuku. 